Hi Thumos, and welcome back. Man, we're here. We're we're here, boys. You know, it seems like a lot of people are saying that there's a war on masculinity. And, you know, I've made a lot of videos on masculinity. Um, you point out, like, how uh, the world's sort of trying to... How should I say this? Bitch you up, right? Like, the world's trying to bitch you up. Make you soft. I think it's true to an extent. But to be honest, I think the war on masculinity is over. It's over. Or at least it doesn't impact us in the same way. We become too savvy. We get it. Masculinity will never go out of style. Like women will always be attracted to a man that is strong, that has confidence, that is centered within himself, that is competent, that is uh, good with people, social, all these things that, you know, courageous, brave, all these things that we say uh, make someone a masculine man. That'll always be attractive. That'll always be a desirable thing. It will never go out of style. So there's no use worrying about that. We all know that, yeah, there may be some dumb Netflix shows and the whole wokeness that goes on. But it's here to stay, baby. And we all know what we need to do. Everyone on this channel is training. Everyone on this tr channel is, you know, doing what they got to do. That's a given. Right? That's a given. So I think that a lot of people that are on YouTube and on their blogs and whatever, and they're saying that there's a war on masculinity, well, they're really just doing that to get you angry and emotional. And I want to make sure that we, we aren't deceived because there is something that we need to worry about, but it's not this. It's not, it's not to get mad at the world and be us versus them. And you know, that's anyone on YouTube, anyone making videos, there's a, there's a motivation behind why they make videos, okay? There's a motivation while they're, why they're putting content out there. And so when they create this us versus them dynamic, what they're doing is they're getting you to rally and, and be more dedicated and committed to their cause, right? An us versus them. You stand with me, we stand against them. This is one of the most powerful ways to create a cult-like following, to create this dynamic. Um, so, so when you feel like someone yelling at you or talking with you and they're enraging you, they're getting you angry and they're getting you emotional, they're doing that for a very particular reason. Now, the war on masculinity is, eh, it's over with. We've conquered it. We've won the war. We know that we're going to be masculine. We're men. Okay? We're not going to become beta males and simps. You know, whatever word you want to call it. We're not going to lose our balls and become emasculated. Right? Now, what I've been looking at is I think there is, in the modern day, it's going to be very hard for a man to be able to express himself through his work. Okay? Now, as a man, you don't really have much when you're just growing up, okay? Maybe you're a good-looking guy, you get some attention from females, but when it comes down to it as a man, you kind of have to, to go out into the world, you have to become accomplished. You got to accomplish things. You have to create and produce this part of being a man. It's how you become someone that gets what they want. Someone that other people want to be around. So part of being a man means that if you don't create, you don't produce, you don't become skilled in something, you're going to more than likely suffer. And what I see happening these days is it's going to be tough for a man to really shine. Uh, a few examples. The influx of, let's just say, AI-generated art. You would once have famous painters, Picasso, Da Vinci. You would have these French paintings that are so beautiful, they just penetrate the soul. You look at them, wow, someone made this, someone mastered this piece of art. But now you have an AI generated image. And so you see that as men become more concerned with making a quick buck 
and we become more concerned with output instead of quality, well, this is where it's going to get tricky because you have all of this generated art that now muddies the water of all this freaking great art. What? How can you tell between great and sublime? Incredible, right? So you're beginning to it's beginning to get diluted. There's beginning to be a sort of uh, camouflage over greatness to really stand out. And so I think that's one thing that we actually have to be concerned about really going forward. All this war on men, all this nonsense, you know, everything else is uh, kind of a uh, distraction. It really comes down to how are you going to go out in the world and make something of yourself? That's all you got to worry about. That's all you got to worry about. You don't need to worry about acting like a know-it-all being an intellectual, um, uh, you know, being the classic manly man. You don't really got to worry about that. You already are a man. You got two balls hanging between your legs. So it really comes down to what are you going to do with your life? You see this also, let's say, th there's these guys on YouTube. I've heard about this recently. I'm sure there's a lot of this happening. But what they do is they pay someone to ghostwrite an, a book like a very simple book in a category, say self-help, okay? If you guys have ever been on Audible, anything, there's like bookstores, there's thousands of self-help books, right? It's thousands of them. It's a very popular topic. So what these guys are doing, what a lot of these people are doing, they're trying to make a quick buck. They're trying to get rich. What they do is they have someone ghostwrite a book. They pay them a couple hundred bucks, maybe even cheaper than that because they compete against each other the ghostwriters to get some sort of, you know, um, uh, someone to work for. They ghostwrite a book. They This person now slaps their name on the book. And what they do, they get an audio, auto, audio narrator, a narrator to narrate the book. They put on Audible. They did zero work. They put the book on Audible. And they do this a lot, like, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 books. And the books just sit there. And they're, they start to, you know, you ever just go on Audible and see the overwhelming amount of books for any subject, marketing, business, self-help, blah, 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 social media. You know, there's just so much stuff. A lot of these books are just bullshit. It's these ghostwriters writing about a topic, putting it out there, and they're collecting this cash, the royalties from that book selling on Audible. And so this is just a, an example of how... You know, the art, the mastery has been taken away and it's become more focused on just producing that content, get it out there as quickly as possible and make some money. So what happens to great books? Well, great books, you know, usually the cream rises, that's obvious, but you just see that the landscape has become like we're inundated by all of this. There's all this noise. There's all this content. There's all this art. There's all these books, there's a war on art that is being created by people that don't really care about the art, by, by people that aren't really artists. There's even AI generated music. And so I think that the real worry, not even something that you should be worried about, but you should be focused as a man to become proficient in something. I think that mastery is one of the things that you should take pride in and you should use your life to really get a grip on a subject, a skill that is valuable, that can make other people's lives better. We've said this before, but I really think that nothing else is going to give you a good life and a feeling that you have a stake in the world, you know, than becoming a master at something and not just trying to, you know, make a quick buck not just trying to, um, not just like, you know, existing and, and consuming all of this junk because a lot of it's junk. You know, a lot of it is junk from people that don't really care. And, and I think that if we don't become aware of that, well, a lot of guys are going to be confused. Really, just take pride in your mastery, take pride in the skills that you're uh, setting yourself out to learn. I think that a lot of guys are so obsessed with the entrepreneur route. They've heard Tim Ferriss, they hear all these guys online 
you know, not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur. Um, and a lot of times the stuff you're doing that you consider being an entrepreneur, like I get hundreds of guys telling me that, Hey man, I'll uh, make you YouTube shorts. I've, I've literally had hundreds of guys send me emails about this. I'll make you YouTube shorts. Like all of these guys really are doing the same thing. I'll make you thumb hundreds of guys, dude, hundreds. Are you like an entrepreneur now? Because you're, is this really what you want to do? We're so concerned with money that we forgot purpose. You know, we're so concerned with, with getting rich and becoming an entrepreneur and getting this quick income. Like before we're 30, uh, like we've been sold this dream, but it's a lie. It's like, what's going to come out of this quick quickness? Okay. Yeah. You make, you make some quick money. And then what? Then what happens when you're 30, 40? What then? What do you, what's the mastery? What are you doing? You're still doing the same thing? What's going to come along and replace you? There's AI generated thumbnails. I refuse to use them, man. F that. I'm not using them. Right? Like I'm not going down that route. I want to keep it simple, dude. Human interaction. Man to man. I want to have a, a, a good group. You know, I don't want this. This all this weirdness that's out there, this fakeness. Um, so I, I take pride in your mastery, but also think about what your where your actions are leading you. Like what route are you going down? Where, where what route are you going down? And you know, there's a uh, you can always use chess as a good analogy. It's like how many times do we make a move in our life and we don't even consider what the next couple of moves are going to be. We don't even like really consider what the next year, say, you know, the next year's move looks like. And then maybe a little bit further, but most of us just, we, we say, take action, take action. You know, action's great. This can, people say, oh, this can lead to overthinking. No, a lot of you guys that get it, you don't even overthink. If you overthink, you just ain't doing shit, okay? Um, but I think sometimes you're a little too gung-ho. Maybe we all are. A little too gung-ho. Uh, uh, out here and we haven't really considered the implications of our our actions right the the repercussions of what we do I was watching this talk with Magnus Carlsen one of the best chess players in the world probably the goat and he said that what he looks for when he's playing chess is harmony harmony in the center where he controls the center, all his all his pieces has purpose. The knight's there for a reason. The bishop's there for a reason. Everything is has harmony. There's nothing out of place. That is what makes you powerful. He said on the chessboard. I think that's a great analogy for life. Is like you have to have harmony in your life. You have to have centeredness. You got to have you got to have purpose in your life. You know you got to work operate from that center, or else you're gonna be scattered. Right? There has to be some reason what you're doing, what you're doing. And I think living in fear, you know, living in, in other people's maybe, what's the word for that? When you live up to someone else's idea of success, being an entrepreneur, do you really want to be an entrepreneur? You're just not sure what to do, right? You're just not sure what to do. It's good to try things. It's good to branch out. It's good to try, obviously, but, you know, but think, use your damn mind. Use your damn mind. Where are we going? And, uh, yeah, I think that's a big thing. There's also so much that you can do um, that I know it's overwhelming. And a lot of times you just put yourself into a box. You do, like, the one thing and you really want it to work. But maybe it's not working, you know? There's nothing wrong with, with failing or even quitting something. There's nothing wrong with that. I think you should stick it out for a while. You should see if it works, but there's nothing wrong with pivoting. You know, there's nothing wrong with trying something else a different way, putting your skills into something else. A lot of times the most, the best way to get more money is just to, to get a new job, like to get a new job that will pay you more for your skill set. Um, but a lot of times you're just so used to that routine and what it is that you're doing that you forget that you don't have to stick with this thing. That's that's hard on the ego, but it's oftentimes rewarding. 
So, so again, man, take pride in what you're doing in, in some form of mastery. You know, take pride in what you're doing. Because there is a war on art itself. And what constitutes art. You know, like, will your stuff be seen? Will you be able to use your skills? Will they be in demand? That's stuff for you to consider. What flows out of you being a man? And embracing life. You don't got to worry about your masculinity anymore. You're a man. Now it's time for you to go out in the world. And create. And produce. And bear fruit. And I think that is a very important thing. Alright. So uh, let's get after it man. Hope you guys have a blessed day. Good weekend. And I'll see you guys in the High Thumos group. Peace.